Hello everyone, my name is Feet and I know that the name of my talk sounds a bit mysterious or maybe a bit vague and many of my friends and colleagues here at JCL were not really sure what that was supposed to be about. What I am actually going to talk about today is mistakes that we make as teachers and how we can learn from them and how we can think about them and how we can use them to our and our students advantage. So we had this teacher in high school, he was from Ireland, a native speaker, taught conversation. His name was Mr. Boyle and you know, you probably know that Czech students and maybe many other students often confuse the words quiet and quiet right? It's one of the most common things that we have to deal with in almost every lesson. And one day Mr. Boyle wanted to make this clear. So he walked up to the blackboard and he wrote the two words on the blackboard and he was like, okay, so these are two different words. The first one, quite, <laughs> is um, a modifier, you know, an adverb, and it means slightly, not too much. And the second one, quiet, is the opposite of noisy. <laughs> and of course, it's the other way around. So I raised my hand, I was like, Mr. Boyle, I, I, I think it's the other way around. And he was, no, it isn't. <laughs> you know, but I was pretty sure it was. So I was like, Mr. Boyle, I really think it should be like the other way around. And then other students started telling him the same thing. And he didn't check. He just admitted in the end that he was wrong. But he was giving me this look, you know, like, Beneshavsky, you've made a powerful enemy. <laughs> okay. And then actually he used this little episode to teach us what it meant to give somebody a roasting, which I think was like an overreaction. <laughs> but then later when I started teaching myself, I understood why he was so annoyed. I hate the word Portuguese. <laughs> but I will remember the pronunciation of this word forever because I learned it the hard way. Students told me I was mispronouncing it <laughs> and like Mr. Boyle, I thought they were wrong, you know, and like Mr. Boyle, I was wrong. <laughs> and maybe I dealt with the situation a bit more calmly than he, than he did, but I was equally embarrassed, you know, and I think it's logical you know, we don't like to be corrected and we especially don't like to be corrected uh, by our students as teachers. And I think that's because being a teacher is a certain position and we feel like that position is threatened. You know, we feel like the student is basically implying indirectly that you don't have what it takes. <laughs> you know, even if that is not what they are trying to say at all. That's usually not what they mean at all. Okay, I'm going to talk about a few things that teachers often do, me included, that don't work very well. And the first one is wasting students' time. This can happen even if we don't want it to happen and even when our intention is very different. Sometimes you come across a fun activity, a cool online game that you can play, that you can project and you can play it with the class and it feels really good emotionally. You know, the students are having fun, you are having fun, but it often happens that you spend, you know, students have like 90 minutes with you, 60 minutes with you and for many of them that's the only time in the week they actually speak English or Russian or Czech or whatever the target language is. So if you spend half of the lesson playing, 
however good that may feel, you know, that can actually be a huge waste. So I think it's important, you know, whatever activity you are planning to do with students to have a clear goal and to have a connection to your plan and to have a connection to the students' needs. The other thing is teaching things students don't need or worse, not knowing what they need because we never asked them in the first place. Another one is rushing through topics, rushing through lessons, rushing through your syllabi because we feel what we are teaching is easy sometimes, you know, and we feel like, well, I can do it, I understand it, so I guess they do as well. So what can we do to prevent this? I think we need to build a system that helps us assess if the students have learned what they need, if they have learned what the goal was, if they have learned what they wanted to learn and not just continue when the lesson is over and not just start a new topic uh, next time. Okay, another common mistake that we make as teachers is not letting students communicate because we get so deep in explanations of grammar and drills and other activities that we don't let students use the language, use the structures or the words that they have learned in the most natural way, you know, the way we use language in the real world every day. So I think it's very important after every drill, after every explanation of grammar, to let students talk to each other, to talk to you and to have a little discussion and just let people communicate the way they do in the real world. And this is a thing that Jakub and David were talking about, you know, not knowing your students well enough can be a huge mistake that many teachers make. So when you remember that, I don't know, Stefan's parents are moving back to London from France and that uh, Peter's wife wants to buy those huge electric toy cars for their three-year-old twins and he doesn't think that's a good idea, you know, all those little things can really help you connect with students and they show them that you care, that you listen and that you perceive them as individuals. And it gives them this message that you can give them what they need because you know what they need, that you can give them what they like because you know what they like. So that's another important thing. Another common mistake is no variety. Now, our methodologists tell us that lessons need to have a certain structure that there are certain features that should be included in every lesson. There should be a lead-in, there should be an outline, there should be some homework, there should be some role play. But it's important to vary the specific content, not to use the same uh, warm-up every time, not to use the same revision activity. So we need to vary that, of course. Because students don't really notice uh, the structure of a lesson on a conscious level. So you have to make sure it is still there, but it's good when the students don't notice that much. Okay. This one is a, you know, I see it as a mistake, but you can't really find it in too many methodology books, you know, or seminars, being afraid to break rules. Now, we as teachers are trained and uh, we are taught to follow certain principles, certain rules. We are taught that things should be done in a certain way. And sometimes we, especially, you know, when we are, when we are beginners, but even later, some teachers uh, approach this in a fundamentalist way, I would say. 
I know quite a few teachers who are so afraid to break the rules, to do things wrong, quote unquote, that they actually go against the aim of the lesson and against their students' interests and their students' needs. So, for example, it makes a lot of sense to only speak the target language, for example, because students come to your class to speak the target language, not their native language. So that makes a lot of sense. But some teachers are so afraid of, you know, uttering just, just one word in the native language and they get stuck on a single word that is not that important for the lesson at all. So I think it's good not to be afraid to do things that are, you know, officially against the rules sometimes. If you know the rules well, if you understand them, if you understand what they are for, you can break them from time to time and that can give you some benefits. Okay, and this is a very common one. Being afraid to say, I don't know, uh, very often when you don't know the answer to whatever question a student is asking you, it is tempting to just make something up, actually, you know. I've done that quite a few times and I'm not proud of that. And uh, it backfires, you know. <laughs> because then I always had to be like, yeah, 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 but actually I like, I checked it, you know, and uh, yeah, sorry for that and stuff. And it's just embarrassing, gets you in an embarrassing situation. And, you know, I think this is, like, uh, this is like something that remains here with us from that 19th or, or early 20th century mentality, you know. Uh, a teacher as the sole source of information, a teacher as, an, as a walk-in dictionary, something like that. We don't have to know everything and it's okay to say, I don't know, get back to that later you know, send an email, you know, I know some teachers have their students on WhatsApp or they communicate them even outside class so you can just get back to them and give them the proper information. And I wish I did. <laughs> okay, and the last thing I would like to talk to you about is a little trick, is a way you can use to improve every day you know, because our senior teachers and our bosses and our colleagues, you know, sometimes we get feedback from them, but not too often. So I, I thought, why wait for an ST to come to my class to tell me what I can improve on and uh, what I can do in a better way? When the lesson is over, we are often tempted to think about anything else, you know, just not the lesson. Catch a tram, you know, go to a party, go to a different lesson, call somebody. We are tempted to leave and focus on something completely different as soon as the lesson is over. And I think if we just think about the lesson for one more minute, once it is over, and we think about how we feel about the lesson, whether we like it or not, whether we like the way it went or not, and why. And if we didn't like it, then why was that, you know, what went wrong? And if we particularly liked a certain lesson, we can think about what was so good about it, you know, and how we can replicate that next time. So that's my last tip for you. All new mistakes <laughs> and thank you for your attention. <laughs>